more information on the St. Irenaeus Ministries, check out www.siministries.org. That's www.siministries.org. Hi, welcome back to Life on the Rock. And we swapped out uh, Ted for Todd. Ted Janiszewski, uh, welcome to Life on the Rock. Now, Thank you. You're an IT major, and That's right. um, interesting fact that you're studying Hebrew now. Yes, I am. How did that come about? Because well, you're probably not going to use that in IT, right? Is that? <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, the, what, what originally drew me into St. Irenaeus Ministries was the Greek program. Now, mm -hmm. now uh, a friend of mine said, you know, there's this Greek program at this, this place. And I said, you know, learn ancient Greek, darn tootin'. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and that, that was uh, going on three years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I had Latin in high school, and now I'm having biblical Hebrew, which I'm really looking forward to. And just, just right at the beginning of the class, I'm actually missing it to be here. Can you, but, speak, uh, can you speak some Hebrew for me? <laughs> uh, I was just talking with uh, Mitch Bakwa, and uh, he said, uh, Yofi. Yofi. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yofi? Yofi. I know a lady named your cat Yofi. <laughs> I'm sure it's a complete accident. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Probably. <laughs> That's uh, great. Hebrew. Whew. You had a question for him, uh, didn't you, Doug? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was just, we, we talked during the break there a little bit. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people out there who probably maybe never heard of St. Irenaeus. And mm -hmm. can you just tell us a little background about him? When did he live? Why is he instrumental in the, in the church and the passing on of the faith for so many centuries? Sure, I think I could speak to that. Can you now, do it in Hebrew, though? Oh, good heavens. Uh, St. <laughs> <laughs> Irenaeus lived at the end of the second century uh, AD. Now, he was an Easterner, so the Eastern half of the Roman Empire, and he ended up in a bishopric in the southern part of France, Lyon. So uh, he, he was a writer. He was what we have from him is really this, this masterpiece against heresies. Now, he wrote it in Greek because he was an Easterner, but we have it in the translation in Latin. And uh, not, not only does he go through you know, various heresies that were around at that time, but he, he says this is what the Orthodox faith is. Mm -hmm. So he'll, he'll say things like uh, primus inter pares, that the, the bishop of Rome is the first among equals. Now everybody's heard that, that's St. Irenaeus. Mm -hmm. Now also he'll say that now the Rome, that th this is the group w with which it is necessary to agree. Now th this, this is the patriarchate, that's the big one. And so, you know, as, as a convert to the Catholic faith, the, St. Irenaeus is a, a very significant writer. Now, and he was pretty well connected with some pretty key individuals with regards to learning the faith, discipleship, and the mentoring, the paraclesis. Uh, uh -huh. Who were some of the men that, uh, that we know lived in his time period that now, he would have connected with? With, with St. Irenaeus, you see sort of this golden line all the way back to the apostles. Now, now, now St. John was the, the longest lived of the uh, apostles, the, uh, the evangelist. Now, now, now St. Polycarp, who the father of Asia, he learned at the feet of, of St. John. And then you, you have St. Irenaeus who learned at the feet of Polycarp. So this is, this is only a few generations after the, the apostles. And that's only a, a generation, St. John, uh, dying is only a generation after Jesus Christ. Mm. Yeah, so if you read your history, you read the Church Fathers, you find that they're how Catholic they are, speaking about the papacy, the Eucharist, uh, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, you all, have, we've heard a lot about community, fellowship, dialogue tonight. Uh, you use the term table fellowship. Uh, what does that entail? We heard you like to eat, right? So I've got to sure. <laughs> I guess I, I do like to eat. And uh, we have some <laughs> tremendous cooks in uh, St. Irenaeus Ministries to whom I am personally so grateful. Uh, <laughs> and I'm expected to be in the kitchen, I guess. I okay. <laughs> no, I would say, I mean, part of that is just that it really is a family. Um, and I would say that goes with the whole, we've been talking about paraclesis, you know, walking alongside one another. Um, Could you speak of it as a community? Obviously you're not taking vows or living together, have a communal right. life in that sense. I would say but just in a real way, experiencing what it means to be brothers and sisters in Christ. Like when Christ said, I give you a new commandment to love mm -hmm. one another as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. Just really um, trying to take those words to heart and not just, right you know, maybe have some good time talking about different topics of faith and that kind of thing, but really being committed to one another right. and being mm -hmm. available to one another. And I would say I really experienced that just even in little ways where people 
seem to be more aware of like how are you doing rather than thinking yeah, about right. themselves. That's so. absolutely true. Now this is the only group I've seen where you wait for somebody to stand up and leave the room so that you can just roundly compliment them. Mm. It's, it, you know, there are some groups where you wait till they're, they're gone so that you can stab them in the back. But uh, no, <laughs> you say, that Andrew, that's, that's a great guy. Right. Right. Let's, let's try to take a uh, few emails. Brother e uh, Leo, you have an email for us? Yes, Father. Dear Life on the Rock, over this summer a, proof, a few friends and I have started praying for unity as Jesus did in John 17. This led to frequent conversations with our Protestant friends at a local coffee shop and eventually to us visiting different Protestant services. At this point, the practice of visiting these churches seems fruitful. We're making friends, learning about what we have in common and what is different. After every Protestant servants, service I attend, I have a feeling of eagerness to return home, and I appreciate Mass all the more. Can you give me any advice on how to get the most out of this or possible dangers I may face? Thanks, Jamie, Marilyn. What advice would you have for Jamie? First and foremost, w with evangelization, you have to love them. And uh, now, if you can say to a Protestant that the big thing about my Catholic faith, our, our biggest asset is Jesus Christ. And, it, you know, I, I just went to Mass. Now, now at World Youth Day, right? Now, th that's the Pope celebrating a Mass. And you went and you saw the Pope, but the Pope is holding Jesus Christ. Now, every time, you know, you go to Mass and you say, I, I went to Mass and Jesus Christ was there. And you say, my Catholic faith, faith has given me a fuller understanding of that. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when, you, when, when you witness as a Catholic, you, you're, you're representing the historic mainstream. Now, some Protestants will look at the Catholic Church and say, there's, there's just, there's no life there. Uh, they, 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 they won't even listen to a Bible verse that you might quote because they don't, they don't see it. They don't see Christ alive. But, but if you can make that manifest and you can reach out like with the charity of an older, of a wise older brother, that's because that's what the Catholic Church should be to the to the small to the the younger uh, Christian groups. You, I mean, you can actually bind the wounds of uh, in the body of Christ, and you can try to to tie it back together. It seems like we keep coming back to that distinction between just being a tent, a teacher who does the monologue and imparts information to being a witness and uh, attracting people through love. Of course, we have this you know, sacred duty to love, and that's what people want, right? They want community, they want love, they want the truth and the, the fullness of grace and the sacraments. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it's been a great show. I thank you so much uh, for coming on. You all are doing great work. I know it's gone fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next week we'll be joined by uh, Matt Marr, a great uh, musician. It'll be a, a real fun show. So uh, I'll give you a quick blessing. The Lord be with you. And also, and also, also with, with you. you. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you and give you His peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See you next week.